All righty, let's get started. Welcome to the Illinois Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Chelsea and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Illinois. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter and that will be Eastern Illinois University. Thank you, Chelsea. Okay. So hi everyone, my name is Isabel Garcia. I am a regional admissions counselor here at Eastern Illinois University. Um, and I'm so excited to share with you guys a little bit of information about EIU that I hope is helpful um, as you start your college search. Um, so a little bit about EIU. Um, we are located in Charleston, Illinois, which is in East Central Illinois, and we were founded in 1895 um, as a normal school. And so what that means is we were founded as a teacher's college. Um, so we've been developing teachers, school administrators, school counselors for over 125 years. Um, our education program is very strong and thriving, um, but over the years we have also um, expanded and we offer about 90 different majors and minors at this point. Um, a little bit about our size and our enrollment. Um, as of fall of 2020, we had about 8,600 students on our campus. Um, so at EI, mid city, we're not too big, but we're also not too small. Um, we really feel like we are sized um, for success. <clears throat> So some insights into academics and at EIU and what you might experience in the classroom is that 100% of our classes are taught by full-time faculty that have the highest degree in, in their field. So you're not gonna find yourself in a classroom that's being taught by a graduate student or a teacher's assistant. You're going to be taught by those experts. Um, our student to faculty ratio is 14 to one and 97% of our classes actually have fewer than 40 students. So if you, Learnment and you really want to get to know your professors and the other students in your classes, um, Eastern will definitely be a good fit for you. Um, so we're also very invested in your future at EIU. And one of the things that we have on our campus is called our career services. And our career services does a multitude of things. They help students find internships. They also help students who are undecided in their major. Um, also about 88% of our EIU undergrads are securing employment in their professional uh, positions within the field that they study or they're making plans to attend graduate school, which is really important because um, yes, you want to go to college and have have a great um, experience and get a good education, but also at the end of the day, you want to make sure that you have a job. Um, and so we like to pride ourselves in the fact that we um, offer many services to our students to make sure that they're successful upon graduation from EIU. Um, and actually, we were ranked as the number one public university in Illinois for getting a job in 2020, according to zippa.com. <clears throat> So some opportunities um, outside of academics at EIU, um, because we're not all work and no play. Um, we do have about 200 plus registered student organizations on our campus. Um, so we offer a lot of different things, um, different groups, different multi-ins. We do have an active Greek life on our campus, um, esports, a lot of different opportunities. We also have a fitness and recreation center on our campus. Um, so everything that you need to stay fit and active while you're a student. We are within the NCAA and Division I in athletics, but we also have about 40 plus different club and intramural sports as well. And then of course we do offer um, quite a few study abroad programs. You can study abroad with a faculty member or you can set something up um, where you do something independent dependent on your own too. So a little bit of insight into our cost. Um, I do want to mention that we actually have the lowest cost of attendance in Illinois. If you're looking at in-state here, we are right around a little over 22,000 for the year. 
And one thing I want to mention is that at EIU, our students don't buy any of their textbooks. They actually rent all of them from the university, which saves you about $1,200 annually. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we're able to be so affordable. Um, but also, we did give away $22 million in scholarships um, to EIU students back in the 2020-2021 school year. So going off of that, um, here is our scholarship matrix. So we do offer automatic merit scholarships for first time freshmen, and those are starting at a 3.3 GPA. New for us is we are no longer looking at SAT or ACT scores for merit scholarships. So essentially, if you um, have a 3.3 GPA or higher, you will automatically earn one of our merit scholarships. And then over here, we also have our AIM High bonus um, structure. So if you have a 3.3 or higher, um, you're an Illinois resident, you're admitted to EIU, you have your financial aid package by April 1st, and you meet all other AIM High grant requirements, you will also earn an, an additional $500 every single year. So what are your next steps? Um, we do have our application process listed here as well as our admission requirements. All you need to do is senior this year, you can submit your application. Our application is free um, and we're also on the Common App this year. Our application is very easy. It takes about 15 minutes to complete um, and all we need is your official high school transcripts once you submit your application. Um, our admission requirements are listed here. So for our test optional policy, we're looking for students who have a 2.8 on a 4.0 scale. Um, if you meet that 2.8 threshold, you're good to go to be admitted. Um, but we also have our test reported admission uh, requirements as well. So if you have a 2.5 GPA with a 960 SAT or 18 ACT, it is. Um, and if you're not meeting either of these thresholds, um, we still encourage students to apply. You can work with me directly um, to submit some additional documentation, like a personal statement or letters of recommendation, things like that. Um, and then lastly, um, these are our social media handles. So feel free to follow us on social media. Um, I will also drop my contact information in the chat. Um, but thank you so much. Let me know what questions you guys have. Thank you so, so much. Okay, next up, we are going to have the American Academy of Art College go. So you're up. Thanks, Chelsea. Okay, guys, so I'm gonna go ahead. I'm Lisa DeLuca, like Chelsea said, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen um, so I could show you some coolness. Um, so basically the school that I'm representing is American Academy of Art College. And I am going to show you a brief PowerPoint that is uh, pretty visual, seeing as though we are an art school. And I think it does a lovely job of giving you um, some information about who we are. So first and foremost, uh, the American Academy of Art College is located in the South Loop of Chicago. This is the building that we are in. Um, so this is obviously a very urban environment. One thing to keep in mind about attending schools in a city like Chicago, especially for an artist, is that you are surrounded by some great resources. Um, for example, the museums that surround us from the Art Institute to the Museum of Contemporary Art, um, even to the Field Museum. These are all great opportunities for our students to visit, be inspired, be educated, and actually use for reference. So for example, many times drawing and painting students will go down to the Field Museum and they will draw from the artifacts. Um, also think about the parks. You know, the city of Chicago is a beautiful city with a lot of great art, um, like outdoor public art, for example. Um, but Grant Park actually serves as an outdoor drawing and painting studio for our students. Uh, we really like to get our students in natural sunlight and uh, we want them to be surrounded by the architecture of the city, uh, be surrounded by the people of the city. Um, so the parks actually serve as a great resource as well. Most of the students who attend the academy are commuters, however, there is a small percentage of students who are coming either from out of state, um, somewhere outside of the Chicagoland area in Illinois. And sometimes we just will have students that don't wanna live at home and wanna be independent. So University Center is approximately two to three blocks away from the academy. We share this facility with other colleges as well. Um, I have stayed here as an RA for our summer program. And I can attest to the fact that it is a lovely institution it has a lot of great amenities and it is safe. Um, so that is something that I know comes up when students are thinking about 
living in the city. Um, so you are not getting past the civil security station here um, unless you have proper ID to do so. Also, the academy is considered a small private school. We typically have approximately 12 to 15 students in an actual art class, approximately 18 to 20 in a general education class. Now we call our general education classes, humanities and sciences. Um, one thing I will tell you about the academy that our students very much appreciate because we do survey our students, we ask them why they return because retention is obviously a big part of being successful as a college. And they return year after year for a lot of reasons. Obviously they like our teachers, they like the program. But one big thing that comes up a lot is they like the fact that everyone knows each other. So I don't think a small school is for everyone, but I think it's for someone. Um, so basically there are a lot of students that like the intimate art community that is formed on campus. The institution has been around since 1923. We were founded by Frank Young. Frank actually owned his own ad agency here in Chicago. So we did start as an advertising design school. We are very excited that we will be celebrating our 100th anniversary very soon. And this is just a small sampling of some of the cool stuff that's come out of the Academy. I won't get into too much detail for time's sake, but one of the illustrators of Coca-Cola Santa, uh, Hayden Sumblum, he attended the academy, he worked for an ad agency, and he actually did the holiday advertising campaign for Coca-Cola that is still with us to this day. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the Copper Tone logo on our sunscreen products. What a lot of you may not know is that the original piece was a painting that was created by Joyce Ballantyne, another alum of the academy, and that, that little girl was her daughter. And the dog, I believe, was the neighbor's pooch. That's the story that we've been told. Um, also, we have a very famous graphic novel alum from the Academy, Alex Ross. And if any of you are into gaming, we currently have Lorraine McLeese working for Bungie. So she's done all kinds of work with both Halo and Destiny. And one of the original creators of Mortal Kombat also attended the Academy, John Tobias, who is a graduate of Whitney Young High School here in Chicago co-created Mortal Kombat with Ed Boon. And we know that that came out in the early 90s and is still thriving to this day. The Academy offers a BFA. So we offer a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in commercial arts. So we have illustration, graphic design, 3D modeling and animation, art direction and photo, and our fine art major is oil. I will also share with you that the Academy is known as an art school. So remember when I mentioned humanities and sciences, we do like to incorporate art into those classes as well. So when a student takes anatomy, it is not pre-med anatomy for like a doctor. It is learning how to illustrate muscles and bones and illustrate in detail many of the different facets of the face. So that is something that does set us apart from other schools is the fact that we are very intense in the art program. So if anyone here really loves art and wants to spend a lot of time in art classes, this could be a great option for you. Um, the Academy is a fully accredited institution. Um, we are uh, able to grant a BFA. So even though the curriculum may be a little different from a liberal arts college, um, it is still a legitimate resource to receive your four-year degree. All students coming into the Academy will also take foundations courses, life drawing and fundamentals of art. And this is the first class that you take before you declare your major. So you will draw from live models, you will draw from still lives, you will learn about perspective, color theory, it's all about the ABCs of art. And this is another thing that does set us apart from other schools that we make all of our students do traditional medium type courses before they are allowed into the computer studio because we believe that that builds a very solid foundation. Lastly, um, I want you guys to know that the Academy is really good about getting our students involved in numerous competitions. So recognition is the name of the game. Here you are seeing some examples of some of the competitions that we've been a part of, the Canvas Wine Competition, um, higher eds uh, competition that they host annually. Uh, we also have a great relationship with the Lightning Bug Music Festival. Um, and then also Flu Bug Shoot uh, has an amazing design opportunity every year where you can design a magazine ad. And if you win, you win a pair of shoes and you get your piece actually published in numerous magazines. So I'm going to um, stop my share because I don't want to go over my time. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and go into the chat now and I will put our handle for Instagram and my personal information um, so that you can contact me directly. So thank you so much. Awesome, thank you so much, Lisa, we appreciate that. Okay, next we have the University of Illinois at Springfield.
Oh, I think we might be muted. Of course I would be. Figured after 18 months, we'd figure this out. <laughs> anyway, I, my name is Rebecca Johnson. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions at the University of Illinois Springfield. As the name implies, we are located in Springfield, Illinois, right down the street from the state's capital. And so there's lots of opportunities here at UIS that I hope students will take time to consider. So kind of why UIS? So we are part of the University of Illinois system. We're kind of the youngest sister. Uh, we just recently celebrated our 50th anniversary. Uh, we have been named a top re five regional university in the Midwest by the U.S. News and World Report. Um, actually, our most recent ranking just came out last week. And the big part is we are a liberal arts institution. We are very teaching focused. So we have all of our faculty members are teaching. Uh, you're not being taught by graduate assistants. And unlike many other institutions, we do not have any lecture halls on our campus. So you are guaranteed to have small classes all all the time. So you won't have any of those introductory classes that may have 100 students or 250 students. So we really intend to keep that small traditional experience alive. So we do have that tradition of educating public service and servants and leaders being so close to the capital, we have lots of those opportunities for our students to get involved. So as I said, we are a liberal arts institution. It's kind of unique being a public institution as well as a liberal arts institution. But what this means is that you will graduate with an education that is never obsolete. So you're gonna be gaining lifelong skills that are gonna be those transferable skills that you're gonna use in a wide variety of different markets, as well as those major related pieces that are necessary. You know, that's what employers are looking for these days. You know, we everybody can teach you the biology or those business. It's those soft skills that you're gonna gain through that liberal arts experience. They're gonna be most beneficial when you're trying to find those jobs. You're gonna learn how to function effectively in a complex and connected world. One of our main missions is to focus on that social responsibility. We wanna make sure that no matter what your major is, you have those communication skills to be able to work with others in your area. We want you to have those analytical and problem planning skills because you never know what's gonna be thrown at you, including the current situation we're in, as well as having that knowledge to be able to function in a real world environment. So some key points about UIS, we are known as the Prairie Stars. We have 30 different undergraduate programs at our institution, as well as 20 master's degree programs and one doctorate that we offer. We are a small school. We have around 4,000 students, about uh, 2,500 are undergraduate students. And we do have a large population of online students as well. We have been a leader in online education before online education was cool. Um, we actually got called in to teach a lot of different institutions how to operate an online education system. So UIS is really a pioneer in that world. We have an extensive campus uh, resources available to our students, everything from learning hubs and academic support centers, our career development center that helps students with their resumes and practice interviews, helping to find those internships and those jobs, both while in school as well as after graduation. Our health services and our counseling center are available to any of our students, whether you're on campus or online, residence life, our recreational facilities, disability services. Those are just a few examples of things you'll find while you're at UIS. So the, to apply to the University of Illinois Springfield, um, if you're coming in as a first year applicant, there are two paths you can take. You can either apply through our internal application on our website, or you can apply through the common application. They are gonna be very similar applications on both sides. Um, the common app does have a little bit of a longer piece to it sometimes that we don't necessarily have on our application. But by all means, if you're doing the common app, go ahead and add UIS and you don't have to duplicate that information over. To come in as a first year student, uh, we're going to look at your transcripts. If you've done any dual enrollment high school, we do want you to send us those transcripts as well. And we're going to look at a personal statement as well as what you've been involved with in high school. We do take a holistic approach to our evaluation. It's not just based on a GPA. We want to see what you've been involved with while you've been in school and see how you're going to get involved while you're on campus at UIS. Now, I mentioned transfer students here as well, because maybe you're planning on going to a local community college and then transferring afterwards as well. Through the transfer process, you apply just through the UIS website. We just need all the transcripts uh, for the colleges you've been enrolled at. Now, 
If you are coming into UIS with less than 30 credit hours, we will also need your high school transcript. But if you have more than 30 credit hours, we're only looking at that college transcript. So if maybe your high school grades weren't the best and you're starting at the community college for that fresh start, we are only looking at those college grades if you're coming in at the sophomore level or higher. So the big piece that everyone wants to know about is the money. So we do offer merit scholarships at UIS to any student that has a 3.0 unweighted GPA or higher. Those scholarships range from $1,000 a year up to $8,000 a year based on those GPAs. And then at the transfer level, we also do offer transfer scholarships as well. Now, in addition to this, we have additional institutional scholarships that are available to students that do require an application process, but these merit scholarships don't require anything extra. By submitting your application to UIS, you are automatically considered for those merit-based scholarships. We do also encourage all of our students to file the FAFSA to maximize your aid opportunities as well. We have lots of different opportunities for campus life with our honors programs, our living learning communities, 17 division two sports with the NCAA, 90 student organizations. So there's lots of things to get involved with. We are open for campus tours. We have an open house on Columbus Day as well as Veterans Day if you're able to come and visit. If you're not, feel free to sign up for a campus visit any day um, and or check out our virtual tour and we're also out on the road. So if you all drop my contact information into the chat and with that, I will pass things along to the next institution. Thank you so, so much. Okay, next up we have Bradley University. All right. Thank you all so much. My name is Andrew Cooksey. I serve as the Assistant Vice President for Enrollment Management at Bradley University. Super excited to be with you tonight. Bradley is located in Peoria, Illinois, which is in central Illinois, um, right in the center of the state. We are approximately three hours from Chicago, St. Louis, Indianapolis. Um, super easy to get to Bradley, and uh, Peoria is such a great resource for our students as the only four-year institution in Peoria. Um, it's one of the largest uh, metropolitan areas in downstate Illinois, and so our students have really great access to so many different opportunities, both personally and professionally, while they're students at Bradley. At nearly 6,000 students, we are in the middle of medium. I often say it's kind of that Goldilocks experience. It's not too big and it's not too small. And so it's really more personalized than what you might find at a larger institution or university. Um, average class size is much smaller. You get that really personalized attention with the, the faculty relationships, but more opportunities than a small college. And that's really when we talk about Bradley, um, the heart of who we are really comes down to our size and really allowing you to get the best of both worlds with that experience. A little more detail on who we are and where we are. We are a walkable campus in Peoria, Illinois. We are located just outside the city in a um, uh, community, a, a historic community. And so you really can walk from one end of campus to the other in about 15 minutes. About 90% of our students, our first year students do live on campus. So we very much are a residential campus. Um, I myself am a Chicago suburbs girl. So I always say this in the presentation that our campus is 85 acres. I don't know necessarily an acre from a block, but it's 85 acres. It's very walkable. You can get from one end of campus to in about 15 minutes. We have five colleges on campus. All of the programs at Bradley are direct entry. And so if you know what you want to study, you can start in your area of study right away your first year. You can start in philosophy, or you can start in religious studies, or you can start in nursing, or you can start in engineering. Um, we have over 185 different academic areas of study within those five colleges, and each year there's over 3,000 individual courses taught at Bradley. The average class size, when I talked about that size difference, the average class size at Bradley is about 17 students. Student to faculty ratio is 12 to 1, and every class on campus is taught by faculty. And so you're going to have the opportunity to raise your hand and ask questions and to engage with your professors. Most of our professors have the highest degree that they can earn in their area of study. And so not are they professionals in their field, uh, but they're also still engaged in research and doing projects and consulting, and, and they take you along with their experiences as you're a student at Bradley. 
We believe so much in that personalized experience, that hands-on opportunity that we actually require and guarantee that our students have at least two real world experiences while they're students. So maybe you're like Miguel, who saw a Bradley postcard come to his mail when he was a, a rising senior, and it had information about the Olympic internship program and partnership that we have with NBC. And he was a soccer player and he wanted to be a sports communications major. And he said, I'm going to try to go to Bradley. This past August, he was one of two students from Bradley who were interns for the Olympics. Maybe you're like Zach, who was a division one basketball player at Bradley, who's a transfer student. Um, and he wanted to play professional basketball after graduation, but he was also a theater major and he loved being on stage. And this summer, you can actually see his name in the credits because he's the stunt double for LeBron James in the new Space Jam movie. Or maybe you're like Abby, who wanted to do be a chemistry major and she got to do so many opportunities and started her research right away her first year at Bradley with a professor doing in-depth research before she had even really gotten into a number of her classes. Those are the kind of experiences that you get when you have both the best of both worlds as a big school and as a small school. We have over 240 student organizations at Bradley. Uh, we are Division I for athletics, since we have 15 Division I organizations. We have a whole host of club sports and intramural sports, and so if athletics is your thing, certainly lots of opportunities to be involved. Over 21 service and leadership organizations, um, a number of opportunities to be involved in Greek life, and then over 18 religious and spiritual life organizations. Bradley was founded as an independent university, and so as a university, we are not religiously affiliated, but if that is important to your college search, your college experience, you certainly can still engage with that while you're in, in college. The biggest asset to the Bradley experience with our student organizations is that you have so many opportunities to be involved and really develop those leadership skills while you're in school. Our application is open. We are on both the Common App and the Bradley App. You can apply either way, whatever works best for you. For our application, we do need your completed application. We do need the official transcripts from your high school or your community college or for your institution if you're transferring to Bradley. And then we do need a personal statement that's one to two pages. You can talk about anything that you want to talk about. It is your opportunity to kind of brag about yourself. We are test optional at Bradley. More than 70% of our students in this last class applied test optional. And so it is test optional for um, majors, academic programs, the honors program, and academic scholarships. So it's really your choice whether you want that information to be shared or not as well as optional for a letter of recommendation. So again, if you feel like it would be beneficial to your application, you're welcome to send one. It is not required for us to review um, and get you an admission decision. You can do a scholarship estimate right on our website right now. Um, also, in about a week and a half, the FAFSA opens. FAFSA opens October 1st. 90% of our students receive a, an academic scholarship, um, and we certainly will work with you to make sure that Bradley is an affordable option and a manageable option for your family. As we wrap up, there's a number of opportunities to visit campus. We have been doing safe visits for the last year, and we're really proud of the opportunities that we've developed on campus. Um, if you want to join us under the stars, we have one more under the stars program this Saturday, which is an evening program. We have tons of virtual events and um, in-person opportunities. I think between just the rest of this month, we have two engineering programs, a nursing program, a financial aid workshop, and an under the stars event. So Thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you need anything, always reach out to Bradley at admissions at bradley.edu. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you so much for all that. All righty. And last but not least, DePaul University, you're up. Awesome. Thank you. I will go ahead and share that so you should be able to see it. Alrighty, great. Well, hello everyone. Um, thank you for joining today. My name is Lauren Elliott. I am an admission counselor here at DePaul University. And let's just jump right into it. So DePaul University is located in the heart of Chicago. We are about 22,000 students in total and about 15,000 undergraduate students. So you are actually part of the largest private Catholic university in the United States when you join DePaul's community. Um, but the great thing about DePaul is we really do like to have the best of both worlds. So you get that large um, university resources, the name of a large institution while having small class sizes and personalized experiences. So our student to faculty ratio is 16 to one, 97% of your classes will be taught by professors. So again, making sure that you're connecting with those faculty that have experience in their field. They're the ones that are going to help get you those different internships, whether it's around the city of Chicago or in other parts of the United States or even abroad. 
Speaking of abroad, we have over 80 different programs. So we have a first year abroad program where students can go with a group of other students and a professor abroad to kind of get their feet wet and then hopefully do a study abroad later on in their career at DePaul as well. So last year or prior to COVID, our students went to Jordan. It's really popular to do the study abroad to Budapest. Um, there's a great study abroad about social media marketing in Argentina. So we really do span uh, you know, many different places that you can study abroad. It's a big piece for us. The other piece I want to mention is that we do represent 49 states in 136 different countries. So a lot of people are coming here to DePaul um, to, to join you as part of that community. So speaking of living in Chicago, we are a dual campus system here at DePaul. So that's a big part of the experience. So you will have classes in our Lincoln Park campus, which is going to be our more residential campus located about 20 minutes uh, north of the downtown area. And then you'll also take classes in the Loop campus. If you're taking classes in our business, college, Treehouse College of Business, our College of Computing and Digital Media, or a College of Communication. So whether you're majoring in it, you'll have a good chunk of classes there, or you want to take an elective class in those colleges, you'll get to go take those in the high-rise area um, of the downtown area of Chicago, which we refer to as the loop. All the students get a U pass, so you don't have to worry about paying to take the L train that you see at the bottom of my screen here. We will, it runs right through the center of our loop, our Lincoln Park campus and drops you at the doors in our loop campus. So again, you get that home base, but you still get to experience the rest of the city. We do have over 300 academic programs, um, so it could be a little bit tough to go through every single one of them, but here is a list of our colleges here at DePaul. So we have the Driehaus College of Business, College of Communication, Computing and Digital Media, Liberal Arts and Social Sciences, our College of Science and Health, our College of Education, our theater school, our music school, and then we have an adult learning program in our School of Continuing and Professional Studies and our College of Law. So if you're looking to go on to law school, we do have a law school here in the loop uh, that you can apply to as well. Um, our theater school and our music school are conservatory style programs. So students come into DePaul and they uh, you know, go off and become professional actors and actresses and they do theater management, stage management, sound recording technology. Uh, they go off and do those things. So those two colleges have a little bit different of an admission process. So if you are interested in those, reach out to me and I'm happy to connect you with their colleges. Um, but speaking of, you know, being in Chicago, you're going to have really great experiences. I always say, you know, it's, there's so many opportunities being located here in the city that for internships, for different part-time jobs, um, but it's also really exciting, right? There's a lot to do on campus and off campus. So we have 350 different clubs and organizations, including Greek life. Um, we have Dungeons and Dragons. We have a skydiving club, a hiking club. We have a wonderful rec center here called the Ray Meyer Fitness Center. It includes a, a pool so you can swim. It includes racquetball courts. I mean, everything you can really think of um, and full-size basketball courts on our top floor. We are really dedicated to service here at DePaul. So you may participate in some of our service immersion trips, um, whether that's here in the city of Chicago or across the United States or even abroad. We also have our uh, D1 DePaul Blue Demons. So students go on to, look, uh, to go watch our athletic games. If you can get a group of 30 students or more to uh, register to attend our basketball games at the Winchester Arena, they will book you a trolley and get you on your way with your friends and you can sit up on the deck and eat pizza and they'll book that all for you. So um, again, just really wanna make sure you, you work hard here at DePaul, you play hard. So if you are interested in applying to DePaul, we are a free application on the Common App. We are test optional. We've been test optional for over eight years now. Um, so you don't have to worry about, um, you don't have to worry about sending your test scores if you feel as though they do not reflect who you are in the classroom. You will send your official transcript and we are optional personal statement and optional letters of recommendation. Our scholarships do go up to $25,000 and we are uh, able to, to include any of your federal or state aid that you receive. And then we do provide need-based aid as well. So that makes, uh, that makes filing the FAFSA really important. If you're ineligible to file FAFSA, reach out to us at whatever, you know, whatever um, medium is most comfortable for you and we can help you with that process as well to make sure we can see how affordable we can make your college experience. So our deadlines are November 15th is early action. That is non-binding. You will receive 
a decision back by December 15th and all other applicants past that will receive a decision back by March 15th. All righty, I will go ahead and put my info in the chat. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. Thank you everyone um, for presenting. We do have um, one college that uh, is not with us this evening. So we are gonna move on to the next portion of the session. So I'm gonna ask everyone, uh, all of our presenters to come back on uh, if you don't mind uh, putting turning on your video and audio. Uh, and I am going to share my screen and get started with the questions. Okay. Great. Um, so we're going to go in the same order uh, as you presented originally. Uh, the question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So I'm going to ask Eastern Illinois University to go first. Sure. Um, so I think the biggest thing, um, piece of advice that I would give to students is to really just keep an open mind and don't limit yourself. Um, I think a majority of us said that our applications are free this this year. So seriously, like take advantage of that um, and apply to as many schools as you can, because um, you just don't know where the application process might take you. And you might end up going to a school um, that wasn't necessarily your first choice school um, that happened to me. And, you know, Eastern wasn't my first choice school, but here I ended up and it was probably one of the best decisions I made. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, American Academy of Art College, you're up. Thank you. Um, so guys, what I would tell you is that in my personal opinion, visiting is going to be your best asset um, in terms of making that decision. And I know in all that we've been through, um, live visits have not always even been an option. So of course, you know, virtual tours and visiting websites, that's always going to be great. Um, and it's wonderful that we have these virtual tours now and these other means of seeing a school. But if you can actually see a school live and, and put yourself there and spend time there, I'm just a big believer that you know when you know, like when you're on campus or when you're in a building, I feel your intuition kicks in and you kind of know, yeah, I see myself here or no, I don't. So I, you know, when I ended up going away to school, I was not going to go away to school. My intent was to stay in the city because um, I was a city girl and, you know, I was just going to commute and, and live at home. I had no desire to do the traditional college campus dorm thing. And that is exactly what I ended up doing. And it's because I went to visit my friends um, who were all away at school. And after spending time there, I realized that, you know, the whole sorority thing and, you know, being away from home, that probably would be a good opportunity. And I can honestly tell you it was some of the best years of my life. So never say never, have an open mind and make the effort to visit. Perfect. I will second what Lisa said and the importance <laughs> of visiting campus when you can. And I'm sure just about everybody else would probably agree with that as well. I will also say don't discount the schools that might be in your backyard. Um, a lot of students, you know, feel like they want to go away. They want to spread their wings. But sometimes the schools that are right down the street from you can offer the best experiences. And if they have those residents' life experiences and opportunities, you know, live on campus, get involved as soon as you can. Um, you know, try to reach out to current students, go to those open houses, those visit days. And again, make sure you can see yourself at that institution. I will be honest, when I was going through the process, the first time I stepped on my undergraduate institution was for orientation. Um, probably not the best thought in hindsight, but you know, you'll find those connections, you'll find those ways of getting involved and to really look not only at what those academic strengths are of an institution, but what they offer outside of the classroom as well, because that's going to be just as important as in a large part of your education experience. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Bradley, go ahead. Yeah, I would say, um, this is your college search. Um, there's a lot of people that are part of this process who will help you and, and offer advice and offer thoughts. Um, but at the end of the day, you're really the one going through the search. And so make sure that you're an active participant in it. Um, if you've been using an email, especially if you've been using a school email, I would strongly encourage you to switch to maybe a, a Gmail or a Yahoo account. A lot of the schools, particularly in Illinois, um, they block external emails from coming through. And so colleges have a hard time communicating with you. And plus, you don't want 
all of our stuff clogging up your school email. And so something to think about there. Um, if you haven't set up a voicemail box on your phone, I strongly encourage you to do that. Um, we like to reach out to you. We want to give you information about application deadlines. We want to tell you about scholarship opportunities. We want to offer you assistance when you're walking through the financial aid process. And even just being able to leave you a message is really helpful to let you know the process that you're, that you're going through. For almost all of you, this is the first time you've ever gone through it. And so we're really here to help you through this process. Uh, and so when you set up the tools that allow us to do that, we're able to communicate with you a little bit more um, easily and freely. And on that, my last piece of advice that kind of ties together is once you make a decision, whether that's the day after you get admitted someplace or April 30th, uh, right on top of the May 1st decision day, let all of the other schools know that you finalized your decision and they'll take you off their list. Um, you are not gonna hurt anybody's feelings. We are all so excited for you. Um, it's why we do things like this together because while it's, Weird in some sense that we're all looking for students to come to our colleges. We're all looking for different kinds of students and, and you're all a right fit for the right place. And so once you find that place, let other places know and they'll stop communicating with you and cleaning and clogging up your mailboxes and your inboxes. Yeah, definitely all great advice. Thank you so much. And uh, DePaul, go ahead. Yeah, awesome. I really do echo everything everyone said. Angie gave some really good advice right there. Um, I would say that another thing then, because everything's been covered, I would say look at maybe some of, um, of the longer programs that schools can have. So there are things like combined degree programs or plus one programs. Every school call it something different. But I think when I was going to school, I was a first generation student. I would never have thought about what I could do even post my undergraduate career. And if you um, so, you know, I would look into some of those programs to see, you know, if you, if you know what you kind of want to do, and even like at DePaul, you don't even have to know you'd want to do a combined degree program. Um, but once you get to DePaul, you could do something where you'd apply for your master's degree, like your sophomore or junior year, and then they would help you accelerate your undergrad so that you could finish your master's degree in a quicker amount of time. So um, those are just like little things, again, that I don't think I would have ever thought about. Um, so ask schools about pro accelerated programs, plus ones, and their honors programs too. There's a lot of really great benefits with those. Absolutely. Thank you all so much for sharing. Um, we are going to move forward now. Um, so I would like to do a huge thank you to everyone for joining us. Thank you to our presenters. Um, this has been a great session. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. We encourage you to check the schedule, um, sign up for more sessions. There's a couple more the rest of this evening. Uh, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as the other ones at strivescan.com slash Illinois. Thank you so, so much, everybody. Have a great night. Bye.